Hi there, welcome back to this tutorial on JNet. In this video, let's look at what's involved in writing a good JNet test. All the JNet tests which we have written until now, some of them actually we didn't follow the conventions of good JNet test. The focus on was focus was on learning JNet and uh, the different elements of JNet. And now let's actually look at what a good JNet is. So uh, let's start with an example. What you're looking at is a simple method for which we'll write JUnits first. So I have a method called get client products sum. That's basically I have a client who has a list of products and these products have something called sum. So uh, a pro something called amount. What we need to do is do the sum of all the products and return back the, I mean, do the sum of the amounts of all the products and return the value back. The only catch is along with the amount, there is a currency field. So if you have products have two different currencies, then you have to throw an exception back. So the first thing which we do is we check if the currencies are same for all products, we throw a different currencies exception. Uh, the next thing uh, that we do is then sum the values and return it back. So basically what it does is uh, look at the currencies if they are all the same it basically sums it and returns it back sums the amount and returns the value back uh, if there are different currencies it throws an exception called different currencies exception so uh, there are three different test conditions that you can think for this right uh, one is uh, same uh, currency uh, multiple products probably two or three products and then we can uh, check whether the sum is properly calculated the other one is probably I can have two products uh, with different currencies and see whether the exception is thrown. And also the last test condition is just to see empty products. I get a zero amount back with the default currency, which is euro. So that's basically what we are going to check. So there is a test already written. Uh, basically the test, if you look at it, actually tests the functionality very well. So what we are doing is actually here, uh, I'm calling it test product sum. Uh, this tech, if you look at the other tests which are present in here, they are test product sum one and sum two. Uh, this actually creates a product, whatever is needed to create the product, and it creates a currency 5.0 and currency euro. And this one actually says currency 6.0 and euro, and you would expect the output to be 11.0. So this test, if I run it, let's say just go ahead and run it. That's success. So that's good. But is this a good test? That's basically the question which we'll try to answer uh, in this video. So uh, the first thing about a test method is the name of the method should tell you what's being tested. The name of the method doesn't tell me what's being tested. So, so something on the lines of test client product sum, I'm trying the condition of same currencies probably two products with the same currencies. That's basically what we are testing, something of that kind. So that's one. The second thing is a test method should always highlight the important values in the method. The important values in this particular method are these two. So if you look at it, new big decimal 5.0 and the currency dot euro are the only two important values for this method. But somebody who's looking at this method for the first time if he looks at the test, he'll not know if this 100 is important or not, whether this 120 is important or not. Actually, it's not. So your test should highlight that. And also the other thing is this method is throwing an exception. And the way it's being handled here is if its exception is thrown, we are failing the uh, method. There are better ways to handle it than this. It's, bet it's rather better that you would not even handle this stuff and actually throw an exception out. So instead of doing this, do an add throws. That's a better way of doing it than putting a try catch around it. Because if it throws an exception, the test would anyway fail. So uh, that's one thing out of the way. The other thing is also your asserts should be really clear. So let's look at uh, the same test written in a better way. If you look at this test, it's the same test. So basically what it's saying is test product sum, all products same currency. Uh, if you look at the amounts, the amounts are the important thing. So these are the ones which are highlighted in the test. 
So we have a method which actually creates the product product lists with the amounts. If you go and look at the method, it just loops around the amounts which are passed and creates values with dummy values. So that's basically what it does. So if you look at this test, this test highlights the important values and I can see that the expected value is 11 and the currency is 0. So I'm actually creating a method assert amount which exerts actual amount with the expected amount. So if you look at this test, this is a very simple test to understand. Even if somebody new comes and looks at it, he's able to probably infer a lot more than by looking at this particular test. So that's uh, the most important thing about writing JUnit test, your method should, the name of the method should be right. It should tell what condition is being tested, if possible, what is the result. The values should be highlighted. The values in the test should be the values that are, sorry, the values that are highlighted in the test should be the values that are important for the test. All the other values which are not important, find ways of taking them out of the test and also how to make your asserts simpler. So those are the important things in writing tests. A thing, if you look at this, this is named as someone. Uh, it's testing the condition where there are two different currencies. So a better name for that would have been to say test client product sum with different currencies. It throws an exception. And also, uh, if you look at this test, this test highlights the amounts better and you are able to read it better and you can see that actually uh, the test reads really well. The last condition obviously is the empty one. I think that's not difficult to write. This, here it's called sum2 but actually in the correct, uh, um, the one with the best approach, it's called test client product sum with no products uh, and it passes an empty amounts and you get an amount with zero and you so uh, so those are all the important things that you need to focus on when writing a JUnit test if you're writing a really business oriented test make sure your test reads really well because uh, what I found in projects is uh, JUnits which are not written well are really difficult to understand and over a period of time they lose their value okay then uh, that ends the JUnit series of videos we are creating more videos as we speak and if you want to stay updated, don't forget to click the subscribe button. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and feel free to share this video. Thanks for watching. Until next time.